In the first round of any NFL draft, there's always busts. And just like football, the same is true with fragrances. These are gonna be fragrance flops from last year. Hopefully, this year leads to a lot less of these. Stay tuned. What's going on, everybody? My name is Joshua, and this is our channel, Sense Sense. To all the loyal subscribers who continue to stick with me through thick and thin, La Familia, I appreciate you. And to all you window shoppers who maybe been here before, or maybe this is your very, very first time, I'm not Ryan Leaf. I won't let you down, especially at such a high price. In another installment of Fast Five, I'll be talking about fragrance flops from the year 2019. Inspired by the NFL draft that's coming up later this week, I decided to talk about some fragrances that last year were some big time fragrance flops. Starting off the list at number five is almost like an entire college football team. Paco Rabanne decided to release these juice box like fragrances. Max Forty talked about them. They were just relatively unspoken about because they just kind of came and went and nobody cared. The bottle literally looked like a juice box or like a Capri Sun pouch. And you literally had to lay them flat, just like all the Bulgari aqua fragrances. And that's the main thing they hated about it. So you think that Paco Rabanne would have used their brain. Needless to say, all of them were for the most part either mediocre or trash and they kind of came as fast as they went. Big time flop. First round failures. Moving right along is another fragrance that was released by John Varvatos in accompaniment with Nick Jonas and it was trash. That fragrance was Nick Jonas, John Varvatos Silver. Following up the failures of Crimson and the original, this was like another one of those fragrances that were like a promising young prospect from a highly touted college that just didn't pan out. Fragrance fans everywhere wasted first round picks on this fragrance when it first came out. Hopefully a lot of them waited till discounters and yet again, they were still let down when they traded for them, when they gave up basically nothing after they were busts. John Varvatos, leave these Nick Jonas fragrances alone. please. Next up is a fragrance that was supposed to seal the deal. It was supposed to be the Omega to the Alpha, the end of this line that was so spectacular, which was the Amen line. And Mugler put out Ultimate. Hello darkness, my old friend. This fragrance was very short of Ultimate. This was the Ryan Leaf of the Mugler line. This was the one that got drafted instead of Peyton Manning. This was the one when you felt like you could have got Peyton, but you ended up with Ryan Leaf or Jamarcus Russell. Potato, potato. This one definitely missed the mark when you had such awesome fragrances such as Pure Malt, Pure Havan, Pure Tonka, the list goes on and on. Mugler hasn't exactly batted 100, Alien Man was trash too, so here's hoping Mugler figures it out. Until then, I guess as fans, we'll be like Cowboys fans. We'll live in yesteryear. Next up is a fragrance that blew a 28 to three lead in the third quarter. This fragrance came from a house that had begun to put out fragrances that were pretty solid or were very, very adventuristic. Gucci Guilty Absolute, in my opinion, was terrible. It smelled like wet offshore steel toe leather boot, but a lot of people liked it and applauded the fact that it was away from the norm and super adventurous. It was like that smartest guy in the room mentality where you draft this guy out of like some ridiculously small college that everyone, and no one's ever heard about. And you're like, oh, look at us, we're so smart. Well, they did that again, but they did it even more stupid. They went ahead and made Gucci Guilty Cologne. Gucci Guilty Cologne smells like that blue liquid that they have in barbershops where they put the combs and the, and, the, and the scissors in and they have to pull a little thing up to get them out. It was just medicinal and sharp and just, Trash. Big bust. Here's hoping that new Gucci Guilty that just came out, Gucci Guilty Parfum, is much better. Because if not, Gucci's gonna have to move on down the line. Last but certainly not least is the fragrance that was supposed to be Dolce & Gabbana's prime number one overall pick. The guy who was going to lead the franchise back into the promised land. And that was Dolce & Gabbana's K. And Dolce and Gabbana's K was just okay. It's one of those basic fragrances, and the sad part is, is just it's not nearly as good as 
any of the other basic fragrances. And in my opinion, is probably one of the weakest releases from the house in a very, very long time. From the tacky bottle design to the fact that the fragrance was blue and it had a big stupid K on the front and it just didn't really have any kind of following, this fragrance just fell flat for so many people. And the sad part is, is the following year, the following season, if you will, which was this year, Dolce & Gabbana released Dolce & Gabbana The One Intense. And between that one and The One Gray, I don't know which one was a bigger flop. So here's hoping that these 2020 draft picks, AKA 2020 fragrances are much, much better. All right, everybody, this is the point of the video where you get involved. Go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. What are some fragrances from last year that you thought were huge flops or utter disappointments? And while you're at it, you've made it to this point of the video. So at the end of the day, it seems like you might've been invested. So why don't you go ahead and subscribe? And while you're at it, go ahead and click that notification bell, which is right next to the word subscribe. That way when my videos come out, you fine folks will be the first to know. And as always, and most importantly, I'll smell each and every one of you later. Peace.